Our first presentation will be the parent perspective on the Norwood operation and CICU, which will be presented by Ms. Jenny Brend. Ms. Brend is a member of Sisters by Heart and has been one of our leaders in the Neurodevelopmental Learning Lab and the MPCQIC. Thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Brend, and we look forward to learning from you. Hi, everyone. I wanted to thank everybody for being here today and also for the, um, the chance to share our family's Norwood experience. Um, it's not often that I actually get to speak about his specific experiences in our hospital. Um, and so I just wanted to share a little bit of our journey um, with specifically kind of about his first week of life. Um, this is a photo of him left here. Um, he's about nine weeks old there. And um, so for those who do not know us yet, we um, this is my son, Tyler. He had a postnatal diagnosis. He was actually born at a local community hospital undiagnosed despite all the prenatal care that we could have received. Um, we had no real experience as a family with any hospitals or medical care aside from my wisdom teeth being taken out. Um, and so after four days in labor in an emergency C-section, we had to pick up things pretty quickly. Um, we had some very quick decisions to make because Tyler was born also with a very restrictive atrial septum. Um, and so the local team that was dealing with him um, gave us a chance. They said we could either hold him for up to an hour um, or try and get a helicopter there as quickly as possible. Um, and they estimated a very poor outcome. I don't think that at the time they really had all of the knowledge of how well these kids can do. Um, and they were estimating about a 10% chance for me to see him the next day. Um, he was airlifted to that larger center. They left me at the hospital recovering from a C-section. And so I really didn't even get to enjoy the newborn time. Um, we didn't get to hold him. We, my husband saw him for about half an hour. Um, I did get to go and pack him up into the helicopter, but that was really all we were able to do with him. Um, and so then we made it to the bigger center. We had to then learn an entirely new hospital system. We thought we you know, learned a little bit in the day and a half, but nope, we got to learn something new again. Um, we were trying to understand what is a single ventricle anatomy and what is this diagnosis and what does this mean for our child? Because that was really difficult when we were trying to figure this out is, what does this mean for our son? Um, it's great that there are other people living with it, but we needed to know what's for our son. Um, we had to adjust our expectations based on parenting. Everybody has this ideal situation of bringing home their newborn. We were not gonna get that. Um, and because we had a postnatal diagnosis, we had to adjust this very quickly. Um, we were far away from home. We were about two hours away from home. We were juggling my medical care and his medical care. Um, trying to do the best for both of us was really difficult. Um, as you can see in that photo, I do not look my best. Um, and so I had some other complications going on as well. And then we were also dealing with my son. He was very unstable. Um, there was a lot of plot twists. He ended up coming out of the cath lab having seizures. And so we had to wait a fair amount of time. Everybody was telling us most Norwoods are done within, you know, two to three days. Um, he ended up being 12 days old before he was ready for his Norwood. Um, and so so then after he finally made it to that hurdle, we then had to make another adjustment where we're now after our Norwood, our chest is open. There's much more support around him. Um, he had three nurses at one point. We were sitting right in front of the nurse's station. So I knew that things were a bit more serious. Um, there was a lot more machines in there. We couldn't even get very close to him. Um, and then he decided that again, he was gonna do his own thing and we had to dim the lights. We couldn't make any noise near him. We couldn't touch him. Um, because I think he was a bit unstable at the time. Um, and then we also, again, had to learn what to worry about. We knew that everybody around us was worried about him. Um, but as parents, what should we worry about? What could we worry about? And what could we do anything for him? We really didn't feel like we could do anything. Um, and, you know, we didn't want to step away before, he, before his Norwood. But at that time, right after his Norwood, we wanted to step away even less. Um, and so we felt that really we couldn't even step away to, you know, go use the restroom because we were that concerned about him. Um, and that was a really interesting time where we kind of took shifts every few hours. Um, we always had somebody right there with him. I'm sure we may have been in the way for some of the medical staff, um, but they made us feel very welcome. Um, there was some silver lining, though. Um, we had wonderful family support and absolutely for any family that's going through a Norwood, if they have the family support, I strongly believe that those kids are going to do um, better because they're able to step away. Their parents are able to step away because they have a grandparent who's able to come in and sit with them or they're able to have a spouse or a family member that's able to come in and, you know, hopefully take a bit of time to let that mom step away and go to her medical appointment. 
um, for us, it was very reassuring as a family that the large center had the volumes and they had the outcomes that were important to us. Um, we did learn to ask some questions early um, and that I really feel like has carried us through this journey. Um, we became advocates for care. We, very, we really felt supported from a mental health perspective from many team members. Um, sometimes people would come in, not even look at my son and come up and sit down with us as adults and say, how are you doing? What can we do right now for you? Um, and so I thought that was a very strong point in my son's care. Um, we were never made to feel like we made a poor decision for any care choices that we, we went with. Um, when things were presented to us, our family would discuss them with the medical team and no matter what we picked, we really felt supported. Um, and I'd like all the families to know that there's no wrong decision when it comes to care, when your team members are coming and giving you choices, um, whatever you go with, you're gonna feel supported with that. Um, when we were really treated as an equal member of the medical team, we made decisions where possible as partners with our medical team. Um, and I really think that that's given us wonderful outcomes for our son. Um, and here he is today. He just turned nine this week um, and he is doing phenomenally well from a heart perspective. Um, and I know that becoming advocates and asking questions early on, especially when there's a lot of changes right around the Norwood, um, that's the time that as parents, we have to learn as much as we can. Um, and hopefully everybody can have these wonderful outcomes. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for sharing your perspective, um, Ms. Breen. Um, we have a few minutes to take some questions from the audience. Uh, we'll start with one. Uh, if you had one piece of advice or one thing you would uh, tell a parent uh, ready to undergo a Norwood uh, procedure, what would it be? I would say, if possible, spend that five minutes before they take your child for a Norwood. And if they're, if they're stable enough, ask everybody to leave the room and take that five minutes with your baby. Wonderful. I think we will move along to our next speaker. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective. 